Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new video. So today then I want to share with you my strategy to make as much money as possible, as quick as possible. So it's a short term strategy then. I'm not thinking a year down the line. Um, I'm thinking more along the lines of the next three to six months. So the idea of this video then actually come from speaking to somebody on a one to one call um, and they were saying how they were just sick of their job and their main goal then was pretty much just to get out of employment as soon as possible. So that's what gave me the idea of the video and hopefully it'll apply to a lot of people watching this then and hopefully help some of you guys out as well then. So that being said then, let's just get straight into it. Um, and obviously we need to start with a store. Now my advice would be to start with a general store and have it based on kind of like a daily deals kind of theme. So you could call it something like dailypicks.com or um, grab it while it's hot, I don't know. Something, not like, don't call it that because that could be misinterpreted as something else. But just something along the lines of that tells people that you're running daily deals or sorry to interrupt guys, I forgot to mention I am giving away a free one to one call with me on this video. If you want to enter that draw, then all you have to do is simply like the video and leave a comment down below. And if you commented on my previous video, then just make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced. And that being said, then let's get straight back into it. Um, you're running things really cheap on offer because then it kind of just tells people exactly what you're doing and what you're all about. So the reason for this then is you, it will allow you to test products individually very quickly and then move on to the next one if it fails. Obviously, if we have a one product store or a niche store and we find we can't sell the products, then we don't want to have to spend all that time creating a completely new store. So with a general store, it just gives us that flexibility. Now, the reason it says test products individually then is because we want to focus on one product at a time, especially if you're a beginner, it was very easy to become overwhelmed when it comes to Facebook ads. So just focus on one product at a time, because ultimately then if you do fail with the products, you want to be able to realize why you failed, analyze the results and then move on um, and be better essentially. So the structure then I want you to use, I want you to have five collections slash niches, so five different niches on your store, and then 10 products per collection. So 50 products in total. Now that might seem like quite a lot, but at the end of the day, we want to, we're want we starting a proper business here. We want people to take us seriously. And if we've only got five or six products on our store, it doesn't look very good. And it won't take as much time as you think. Once you have a product page template, then you can simply just copy and paste it for every single one, um, and then obviously just adapt it to that product. So. Once you've done that then, then I want you to have two trending products per niche. So in total, 10 products that you would consider a good product to go out and test on Facebook. So let's say with the niches we're gonna be using our dog, bike, cat, and so on, then you want two trending bike products, you want two trending dog products, two trending cat products, and then we're just gonna work our way through them one by one. We also want to make sure then that we include an upsell just to maximize average order value. At the end of the day, we're trying to make as much money as possible. So to not include an upsell would just be silly. Um, but just make sure then that the products that you're upselling comes from the same supplier as the original products that the customer is buying. That way it's going to save you two lots of carriage charges plus the products are going to arrive together. So it just, it just removes any kind of weird questions from your customer essentially. Next thing then is I want you to use countdown timers for the products that you're currently testing. Now there's a lot of controversy about these, but when used correctly and ethically, they can be a great addition to your business. And this is the strategy I want you to use behind them then. So the product you're testing and focusing on with your Facebook ads, just make sure you're driving people directly to your product page. And I want you to run a sale on that particular product for a maximum of 24 hours and you can use a countdown timer to actually illustrate that. Then at the end of the 24 hours, I want you to put the price of that product back up to its original price, then change the timer to sale starts in and then keep swapping it out in and out every 24 hours. And then when you're not advertising that product, so when that product has a countdown timer in it that says sale starts in, then that's when you start advertising the other product in the same niche. So you're not skewing the data on your Facebook pixel. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, the reason I want you to do that is because if you just don't use countdown timers ethically and people keep coming on your store the next day and seeing that you're still running the same offer, the same whatever, then it's going to put people off. Whereas if they come back and they see that the product price has actually gone up, but then they see the timer saying that the sale is going to start in less than 24 hours, then it gives them incentive to come back on or have a look around at other products or whatever it is. It basically just makes people believe you are who you are running daily deals, daily sales. And it makes people buy into you that little bit more. And plus it gives people a reason to come back so they can get that product um, at a different price. One thing you can do as well is on your own on your homepage is just advertise the current product that day that you're running a daily deal on because then it draws their attention to actually have a look at something. And you never know if it's in the same niche, they might buy that product too. 
Final point then is if you have the budget to do so, then I recommend using the Shoptimize theme. Now, as it says there in brackets, I'm not affiliated at all, but I'm yet to see a bad looking Shoptimized website, uh, Shopify store. The theme, in my opinion, is just the best one you can buy. So if you are looking for a theme that's gonna convert a lot higher, to be honest, than any free theme, um, then that's the one I recommend. Now, I'm not saying you can't succeed with a free theme because you definitely can, but I'm just saying if you have that budget and you wanna give yourself the best chance possible, then that is the theme that I recommend. Moving on to the next section of the video then, which is what country should you be going after? Now, the best thing to do is pretty much just follow the demand. So use Google Trends. I've just got a quick example to show you. So this is the dog cool map. Um, if you can put any search terms into here, any product, and it will tell you kind of like where the demand is, whether it's on an upward or downward trend, make sure you pick a product that's on the upward trend. And then you can follow the the countries where the search term is most popular because then that tells you where the majority of the demand for that particular product is. If you can though, stick to EU. It's just much, much, much less competitive than US. I did a video on the best countries to target. Just make sure you target ones that have a high English speaking proficiency. So make sure you go check that video out. But just to kind of give you an example then, Oblo did a study, a study. They're the ones, they're kind of like the main bridge between Shopify and AliExpress. So they know, they get a lot of data through so they can do studies like this. And if you just look at the 2017 total orders, just look at the size of the US compared to every other country. That just shows how many people are actually drop shipping to the US versus other countries. So in terms of competitiveness, then your best chance stands outside of the US in my opinion. I mean, if you just look at this, the US versus just the rest of the world, it still outperforms it by quite some. So moving on then, the reasons behind this then is it will convert higher and only increase as popularity increases. So if you pick a product that's at the very bottom of its kind of peak, then as that increases, there's gonna be more and more people looking to buy that product and therefore your conversion rate should increase. Final point then, try and source product in the local country, use the ship from menu on AliExpress, just purely because the quicker the, we can get our product to our customer, then obviously the better. So just to quickly illustrate how that works. Um, I'm on AliExpress here. Make sure you choose the country that you're gonna be selling in, so wherever the demand for that product is. Search for your product, and then this little drop down here, you can select all these different countries which you can source products in. So if we're shipping to Denmark, then these are all the different options. There's even products in the UK, which you can see. Um, but if we were to get something a bit closer, I don't know, let's just choose Germany. We can pick on, let's go for the most popular products. We can have a look at this then and just see just to illustrate kind of how quickly you can actually source your products on AliExpress. So if we just choose Germany, uh, will not deliver to Denmark. In fact, let's try the UK. So five to 15 days, as you can see, is a lot quicker. So the reasons behind choosing a seasonal trending product then is because it will sell pretty much immediately. Um, brand heavy products like clothing, apparel, or um, watches, things like that, they're the kind of things that people need to be reminded about over and over again. Whereas if it's a trending product, then it's in demand, and it's the kind of product where people don't care what brand it is, then it's the sort of thing that people will buy an impulse. And what I mean by that then is when they see it, as long as it's on a good store and you're selling it for the right price, they'll just buy it there and then. So when it comes to thinking about what kind of products to sell, um, start thinking about in your mind and think weather related things because obviously, especially in the UK, as soon as the sun starts to come out, people are in a better mood. They're spending more and more time outdoors. Um, so think about things they care about or that they're sociable with. So obviously the dog niche is absolutely huge and as the weather gets better, more and more people are spending time with their dog outdoors. So think of the kind of things that they'll need. If the weather's getting hot, then things like dog water bottles. If you have a look at um, Google Trends, you can see that the search term for dog water bottle um, tends to increase as the weather gets better. This is worldwide too. And at the moment, it's just approaching kind of like the highest point in popularity. So a certain product like that then would be a good idea. E-packet is a must then. Um, that is if you do decide to source products from China, just purely because we don't want to miss the season. Um, if a product takes four weeks, which is a rare case to be honest, but just in case then, the weather in the UK is unpredictable and by then it might be raining again. So just make sure you try and source your products as quick as possible. So use that little trick I showed you where you can choose to ship products um, from a bit closer. And then just kind of a general note, stay away from anything consumable or hazardous. 
either you'll get banned on Facebook or if somebody eats it and gets ill or whatever, it's just the kind of thing you just want to stay well clear of um, unless you have the experience and you know that you're working with a reputable supplier. But just keep things simple. Go for generic products that can't hurt or harm anyone or doesn't need to consume. Plus, when it comes to getting it into the country too, it's going to be a lot quicker. I know when I used to sell um, LED dock colors with the battery inside them, so they used to come across with the batteries included, um, it would sometimes take a couple of weeks to go through customs because they'd want to actually test the battery, see what kind of battery it is, and just make sure it met the right regulations. So basically just keep it simple. Moving on to the final part of the video then, the Facebook ad strategy. So this is what I recommend, or at least what's been working for me really well recently. So I tend to, I've been using CBOs quite a lot, obviously from the 1st of September, everything is going that way. So I've been trying to get to grips with it and this has been working really nicely. So start with a max of five ad sets then in one CBO campaign um, and make sure you choose the lowest cost bid strategy and you want this to be a traffic campaign as well because the whole idea or point of this is just to try and get as much traffic on our store as soon as possible because it's a trending product, the product is gonna be in demand. So you don't necessarily have to go out and tell people, tell Facebook to find people who will purchase because if it's an in-demand product, then all you need to do is simply get them on our store if that makes sense. So put the daily budget as £100. Now I realise that's quite a lot, so make sure you watch it every six hours and keep an eye on the cost per click as well. As long as you're getting clicks for under 20p, then to me that's a pretty good, it's pretty effective. But obviously if you're watching it, then you can keep an eye on the kind of numbers you're getting. If your CPM starts to creep up, um, starts to go the opposite way, so you start spending £20-30 on a CPM, then that's very expensive in my opinion. But the main thing you want to keep your eye on in the CP is your CPC. If you can keep that under 20p, then you're getting pretty cheap traffic. Each ad set then in terms of structure, you want one interest related to the niche that you're in and you want to flex it with engaged shoppers. Now in terms of the size of the interest or how broad you want to go, it's completely up to you, but just make sure the audience size is around about 1 million people and make sure this interest then is relevant to your niche in the most specific way possible. So. If you're going into the cat niche, for example, try and pick interests that are related to people who will own cats. So things like cat training, if that exists, or cat foods or cat brands or cat shops. Now, a word of warning as well is make sure they're purely unique to cats because I've seen people target shops that sell cat food, but there'll also be shops that sell dog food as well. So it's not an interest that's specific to cat owners, if that makes sense. So let it run for two days then, have a look at the numbers. Um, I typically do this at midnight. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that for whatever reason, I've always just traditionally done it at midnight um, and duplicate all the winning ad sets at midnight into another CBO, but make sure the objective of that right now then is purchase campaign and then double the budget. And what that's gonna do then is it's basically just gonna tell Facebook that you found the right audiences that are performing well, but this time we do wanna go after purchases because we're driving in a significant amount of traffic, spending a hundred pound a day at 20 p per click. Um, I think that's gonna be approximately 500 visits a day. So you're gonna be getting the traffic, so now we wanna build on um, the purchase event data, and essentially this is what it's gonna do, and it's only gonna be doing it, because you're only duplicating the winning ad sets, you're only gonna be driving or showing your ad then to the most highest quality audience, if that makes sense. So duplicate the winning ad sets at midnight, so start a new campaign at midnight, make sure it's a CBO, make sure it's a purchase campaign objective, and double the budget. And that is typically what I'll do then in the first kind of week. And then if you want to build on that, if you have the budget, things are going nicely, then this is just a kind of extra stuff that I recommend running alongside. And I typically keep all my lookalike audiences and retargeting ads in separate campaigns as well, just because I like to keep my ad manager neat and tidy. So to build on then what we've already discussed, to be honest, there's nothing really new here. You've probably heard me talk about it in other videos. However, if you're new to the channel, then I'm going to go through it quickly with you now. So what you want to do then is create lookalike audiences based on the highest quality traffic as soon as you have 100 people. So as soon as you have that custom audience that has 100 people in, then you can build these LLAs. And typically, they're gonna be the kind of audiences as well that convert the highest. So definitely start experimenting with them as soon as possible. And the ones that I recommend then are in terms of the highest quality, you want the few content you want the people who have for you contented, if that's a word, you want people who have added to cart, combine that into one audience, you want your purchases, and then you want your video views 95% and 75% if you're using um, a video ad, of course. If one lookalike audience approves a winner, then create another lookalike audience based on the same audience. So let's say you've based a lookalike audience on the purchases, and that audience is going really well, then create another lookalike audience based on that same audience, because you can actually 
create more and more lookalike audiences based on the same custom audience, if that makes sense. Any questions at all, by the way, um, feel free, leave a comment down below. I always get back to every single person. In terms of retargeting ads then, you wanna retarget, so create a custom audience that's gonna include all your view contents, all your add to carts, um, and you wanna retarget all of these people with the exact same ad. Because it's a trending product, it's the sort of thing that somebody's gonna buy at some point. So when they first come on your store, they might not wanna buy it, they might get distracted. So simply just showing them ad again and again um, gives them more of a chance to actually remember that you sell it and actually come back and buy it. Final point then, just to finish the video off, is everybody who's purchased, everybody in your purchase um, custom audience, um, retag them all again with a different product but in the same niche, including a discount code. So make sure it's kind of like a loyalty ad. So you can say, hey, thanks for shopping with us. Here's 20% off your next order. And then you can have like a carousel ads of all the different products in the same niche. Because of course they're gonna be relevant. If they've bought a product in the cat niche, then showing them all these other different cat products is surely gonna be relevant to them. And offer them a discount code as well. It builds that relationship, it shows trust. It shows that you're genuine and thankful for them shopping with you. So it just entices them to come back to you and spend even more money. And that being said then guys, that is the whole strategy. If you're still watching the video, thank you very much. Hopefully you've got some use out of this. If you have and you put this into practice, I'd love for you to come back and let me know um, what kind of results you get. And that being said then, if you enjoyed the video, please do make sure you leave a like um, and help me get to 5,000 subs. We're gonna hit it within a week, I think, which is just absolutely mind blowing to be honest. Um, and if you wanna enter that one-to-one -one draw then for a chance to win a call with me, um, make sure you leave a comment down below. And that being said then, let's get into announcing the winner of the previous video. So here we are then guys on my previous video, um, top 50 products to dropship in 2019. Um, it took me hours and hours to put this together, but you guys seem to enjoy it, so it's all worth it. Um, so I'm just gonna take the URL top left, head over to the random comment picker. So this, these competitions, by the way, are 100% random. I don't pick the winner. Um, and the winner of the previous video then is Omar's gym. So thank you for the video. Thank you very much. Um, reach out on Instagram. We can get that call arranged. And guys, if you want to stop trying your luck, um, you can actually just get straight down to business and book a call with me straight away. There is a link in the video description down below if you want to do so. Um, but no worries if not, um, please do keep commenting on my videos and I'll see you in the next one.